So tell us about you, like, who is Mitch? Mitch is a country boy from Australia that uh, spent a lot of time around open spaces, around a family that uh, didn't always have it easy, but found a way to make it feel easy at times. I really think that the way I was brought up translates to the person I am today, who I am throughout my professional career. And I think just the understanding and appreciation I have of the situation I'm in because we're in such a unique situation that I don't think many people really get to sit back and really see themselves from a third person point of view and say that's that's where I am now but that's never where I thought I would be uh, given where I've come from. So for me, uh, I feel like I'm someone that wants to try everything in life and wants to understand the good and the bad with every situation, whether it's you know meant to be or not meant to be, sometimes you just gotta find out because the world we live in has so many opportunities that we turn our backs to it sometimes. So sometimes just accepting the, the moments and the, the opportunities that fall upon us, that, that for me is what my life is about at the moment. It's about enjoying my sport and enjoying traveling the world and meeting new people and having experiences and um, having trials and tribulations, but also understanding that you know I'm only here for a short period of time and while I'm healthy and young, I've got to make the most of it while I can in this, this vessel of mine. So gr growing up for me was, was kind of simple. It was, we lived on a little bit of land to start with. Um, we had around uh, five or six acres for a little bit. Then we had 20 acres. We moved in and out of town, um, smaller housing. And then, you know, some opportunities we, we felt like we were very lucky and other opportunities we felt like, you know, we, we didn't fall in that category. But the thing we always did was we always had the opportunity to play sport. We always had the opportunity to be with our friends. We always had the opportunity to try new things and get out of our comfort zone. I think that for me is what makes me the person I am today. So growing up in country Victoria, a little town called Horsham, um, all the way down in uh, the Wimmera in Australia, it's uh, a population of maybe 20,000 back then and it might have diminished or gone up, I'm not sure, I haven't been back for such a long time and I don't really get much time to go back and see my mum and dad who both still live there but you know, it's, it's still always going to be where I come from and it's always a place that I know that throughout life and when I get that wanderer's you know, feet feeling and you go, well I need to get up and move, I need to go and try and experience something new. I know it comes from, you know, getting up early to ride my bike to school every day or meet my friends around the block and then we'd all go together. Um, or it was the, hey, whatever you do, just be home by six and make sure you look after yourself. That was the, the freedom that we had and that was the choices we, we got to make. But if we were late or past curfew, well, we heard about it. We definitely got soap in the mouth and, and that washed out. So that didn't happen too many times. But for me, it was always just, family first and understanding that the opportunities provided for us although at the time we never understood them you look back now and you appreciate what you actually had because sometimes it wasn't easy to find the next meal or to have a new pair of shoes or to have you know the uniform or the basketball fees paid for but somehow you know it was masked when it wasn't achievable but at the times where it was we always you know it felt like it was just you know, always going to happen and that's I think an incredible job from my mum and dad you know parenting me and and raising me and my, my sister to, to be who we are today. For me my family is and it should be to everyone everything I mean you don't it doesn't matter what happens whether it's good or it's bad I feel like if we don't appreciate the life we were given for whatever reason it is whatever situation you're in I think that you really kind of shortcoming of, of, of gratitude and, and the responsibility that life gives us. So for me, my mum and dad, my uh, two older sisters, um, you know, they have been there for me through the best times of my life and the worst times of my life. They've, um, they've not judged me when um, everyone else in the world I felt had. And they also do pass judgment and give me feedback, criticism, love, responsibility, growth, development, everything. And they all have different perspectives. We've all been in different situations and we all understand the world very differently, but we can all share and listen and help each other kind of grow as a, as a family. And although my mum and dad aren't together anymore, they both have you know, beautiful, wonderful partners that care for them and you know, my sister as well. And 
and everyone else. You know, I, I consider some people around the world my family. I consider some people my brothers. I consider some people my sisters. Um, that's never going to change. So it's not just my direct family that gets that kind of mention because there's been so many people in my life that uh, have given me an opportunity to be okay when I haven't always been okay. And they've also made me feel responsible when I haven't been held accountable. So um, yeah, there's a lot of people that fall into those categories, but obviously my my mum and my dad and, and both my sisters are the, are the prominent features of that. So growing up was was very much filled with a lot of different activities. I never kind of kept focus on one thing for too long, but I never wanted to be mediocre at, at everything. I always wanted to be the best I could be at everything. So it started out skateboarding, BMX, mountain biking, mountain biking, a lot of more freestyle um, rhythm kind of uh, feeling of, 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 I guess, action sports in that sense. Um, there were times where we had, you know, a quad bike or a three wheeler or a motorbike, or we had a little paddock basher car that we got from the tip for a couple of hundred bucks, and you know, we used to rally around. We ended up building a go kart, um, you know, from the scrapyard, and you know, just different things like that. that that's kind of where. I guess my adrenaline side came from because as soon as I was big enough, I kind of was, you had the extended pedals in the car and you were learning to drive a manual. Uh, and then for me, the sports I got into was little athletics. So a lot of track and field, throwing, running, jumping, understanding that that kind of made me ambidextrous. I could jump off both feet. I could throw off both hands. I could do different things. Then it kind of transitioned into more actual team sport, which was Australian rules, football, basketball, uh, my dad was a, quite a snooker and billiards player and used to play darts, so I uh, got a lot of that from him as well. So we used to try and uh, steal people's money at the pub and, and different places at tournaments when the older guys thought they could beat this young kid who wanted to bet 10 bucks and lose two or three games in a row and kept going double and double and double until I won bigger off of him. And, and then I kind of got frowned upon for realizing that I was setting people up for failure. Um, so for me, I always wanted to try different things. I played uh, football, so soccer, uh, even cricket, which uh, some people may or may not know. Uh, yeah, I tried my hand at everything and I felt like I was never sure what I wanted to do, but once basketball came along and I had the choice between Australian rules football and basketball, it was, it was really a hard decision for me because I like both. I love the physicality. Um, and the conditioning and strength and toughness and also you know, spatial awareness you needed for football and Aussie rules football. Um, but also loved the, the in, in intricacies and the detail of footwork and how a smaller space can be just as open as you know a large football field. So I enjoyed both concepts. I enjoyed being good and bad at both in different areas. Uh, but I think that progressed me into the opportunities that, that came later down and even into my game and the way I play today people think that I might play a little physical a little aggressive or whatever but it's actually pretty timid in the grand scheme of things compared to some of the sports I grew up playing so definitely very lucky to play quite a few different sports and have the opportunity to play different sports as well uh, having friendship groups that played various things and were quite good in other areas so I could take bits and pieces from those that were really good and try and help shape myself into being somewhat adequate at some of these sports. The opportunities, I guess, to travel and to play and to be looked at as a, an import or you know, an international player, it kind of starts in Australia. You obviously start where you're locally from because there's a lot more positions on the teams. Now, for the first five years of my professional career, I came off the bench. I was eighth, ninth, tenth on the roster, barely playing any minutes. Uh, feeling like I was a lot better than I really was and thought I was working a lot harder than I really was and not understanding truly what it meant to be a professional. So it took me quite a few years. I got a few opportunities in the lower, like the second division in Australia. At the time it was called SEABL. And I played over there as I guess the main guy on a team for the first time, had quite a good season, um, but obviously a level below the NBL in Australia. And that kind of gave me enough confidence to go, well, if I can be good enough there, it only takes a certain bit of mentality and a little bit more work and tweaking to really understand that maybe I could do this at a higher level. And then over the next couple of years, I had a fantastic coach in Joey Wright, uh, along with many other coaches along the way who were phenomenal with me, but Joey really helped me unlock my mental potential of understanding you can be great, like stop with, with holding yourself from being that person 
Uh, I never believed it for quite a long time until it slowly came to fruition. And then it was like, now I'm playing for a national team. Now I'm playing for Australia in the senior Olympic team, a World Cup. I'm playing over in Europe, I'm playing in the NBA. And all of a sudden it's like, this snowballed into where it is today and now I'm traveling the world every couple of months, playing in new teams, playing in situations, setting myself, my family and my friends up, um, as well as being able to do things in this world that I never thought it would be possible. So yeah, it's, it's quite the roller coaster and it sounds really simple, but when you really look at it and take a step back from where I think I had been, you realize how much shit you had to push uphill before you really found the fruits of, of your hard work and labor. So, you know, this is 13 years in the making and I'm kind of at a point in the last probably two to three years where I'm like, okay, I know who I am as a player. I'm comfortable being that player no matter what anyone says, or no matter what social media says, what scouts say, what coaches say, what anyone else tells me, I'm comfortable with the player I am and I'm proud of the person I've become. And I think that's the hardest thing to come to terms with is knowing who you are and being okay with that because this is such a highly criticized sport and it's a very entitled sport in the fact that we don't get excuses to not be okay or to perform well. The excuse is you're getting paid well to play this sport, you should just perform, no excuses. Doesn't matter if your your mother died or your father passed away or you had a breakup or a business has gone south and you're now bankrupt. Doesn't matter what happens in your world, you know, whether you're susceptible to hate online or, you know, lies, whatever it might be, there's no room for wiggle, there's no room for error. It's just perform or you know, you are a bad apple, you are not good enough for this, you don't deserve this, you're entitled. So that can be very hard for players and that's been very hard for me in the past, but now I'm just at a point where it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks. Like, I can wake up and go to bed and be just as happy as I was the day before and, and understand that, you know, win, lose or draw, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Like, it really doesn't. It's just people see one side of me at times and then they go, holy God, like I didn't didn't realize there was other, other ways and other personalities to you. We just thought it was, super intense, really nice, kind of, you know, hard worker, and, you know, players hate you, that play against you, but, you know, the coaches respect you, or whatever it might be, you know, lose a game last night in game six, but it's, I sleep easy, I wake up, I go and jump out of a plane for a few times, and I get to relax, go to the beach, and I have a great day. I don't dwell on the past, because it's a game. And yes, we get paid to do this, but at the same time, like I'm playing a game in Puerto Rico on the beach, you know, I can hear the waves crashing outside. Like I get to, you know, enjoy my time being here and being, you know, present and alive. And that's, I think, the biggest thing that a lot of players don't understand. They forget that this is life. Still, you have to live a life. You can't be conformed to being a a mouse or a, a guinea pig on a spinning wheel. And you just got to run and play basketball. You've also got to live your life a little bit within the realm of of what's acceptable. Puerto Rico, I came last year for about a month, finished four games of the season. We had to win all four with Guanabo. Had visa issues getting in. Uh, apparently, you know, they thought it was dodgy that an Aussie was coming over to play in Puerto Rico and helped me up a little bit. But the cool thing is I got to come back. I got to spend a whole season here. Now, obviously it's a very volatile league. Didn't realize how crazy it was until I got here and we fired two head coaches in 10 days. and got rid of imports, local players, traded guys, some people left, we never heard from them again. And I was sitting there just like, well, we started one and eight, far out, like, this is gonna be a long season, like, there's a lot of games. And after that, we go, I think, 20 and seven for the remainder of the season. We sweep a semi, we sweep a quarterfinals, we're now in game seven of a semifinals. And I look at it and I go, all of the, goes on behind the scenes, all the, the things, the conversations, the thought processing, the analytical breakdown, the scouting, the day-to-day -day recovery, doing your hobbies, trying to balance life, relationships, whatever it is, you're just trying to make the most of it. And I think for a little bit, I got lost in the whole, it's game, it's recover, it's that's it, like do the right thing perfectly. And for me, that's never 
it's never been what's most efficient, most successful for me in terms of results. I have to enjoy my life and I have to have a balance of not work and play, but I just think life and sport. And I think for me, the biggest understanding was the island's incredible. I've got to experience it. I've got to do the waterfalls. I've got to go to Cabo Rojo. I've got to go to Isabella. I've got to go to Arecibo and, you know, everywhere. I've got to, I've got to be in Humaca. I've got to go and do the bioluminescent bay. And I've got to try the restaurants. I've got to try Mofungo, even though I don't like plantains a whole lot. Um, I don't really like fried pork a whole bunch either, but I do not dislike it at all. But the thing is, it's a different culture for me. And I think the greatest thing is people are so welcoming here. So I think what helped that and what helped people this season really, I guess, welcome me with open arms was the fact that at the convenient time, the World uh, Cup for ba or the World Tournament for Baseball was on, um, the Puerto Rican national team had obviously dyed their hair blonde and said, you know what, we're all going to support each other and everyone on the team is going to have blonde hair. And I rolled in day one with bleach blonde hair at the welcoming party um, at Grossman's place. And everyone said to me, oh, how great, you, you bleached your hair the same. I was like, yeah, same as the Puerto Rican team. And I ran with it. Um, although it was for a best friend's boxing fight, uh, it actually worked out really well. And for the remainder of the season, I've actually kept it the same color because I felt like if there's a part of me that's going to be attached to the island, I need to make sure that I feel that I've made an effort to experience the island, experience the people and the culture, and also the sporting traditions that the Puerto Rican you know, natives have actually gone out and said, you know what, this is what we stand for and this is who we are. And I think for me, it's, it's a part of, although I might not be Puerto Rican, I feel like I've worked on my tan, I'm eating more pork and I've got blonde hair, so I feel like I'm kind of getting there a little bit. But uh, I've had an incredible time here. I love the fans, I love playing on the road. I spoke to a lot of the Carolina fans after game six and actually waited around for 20, 30 minutes taking photos and having conversations with them and just said how much I appreciated them and how annoying they were and how great they were as supporting their home team. But yeah, it was, it was an ex extremely incredible season. Hopefully a lot more to go still. Um, time will tell. Uh, by the time this is obviously out, we'll, we'll know our result and our fate. But you know, that is going to be what it's going to be. It's about enjoying the process and understanding that it's nice having 5,000 people blow into truck horns while you're shooting free throws and telling you you suck. And one of the, I think one of the sponsor's sons bet me $100,000 that I wouldn't score in the last minute and a half. And I looked at him and I said, hey, don't spend daddy's money. You've got to spend your own money, make a bet. And then I'm going, hitting a three straight after that. And I looked at him and smiled. But they're the conversations that you enjoy and afterwards you go and talk to him, you give him a high five, you have a laugh, you take a photo. And that's why I've enjoyed Puerto Rico because people are lighthearted and they appreciate competitiveness respectfully. Someone falls down, I'll help them up. But at the same time, in the heat of the battle, there's times where I'll put you on the floor deliberately and I won't help you up. But we're gonna be competitive enough and then at the end of the day, I'll walk down the line and if anyone on that team is still ready to shake my hand, then I'll shake everyone's hand. And I think there's a fine balance for me that I, I try and make sure that I respect the game and the people, and especially the fans, our own and away teams, because they work bloody hard to, to come to these games and support their teams and to obviously you know put off the other team as best as possible. So yeah, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed my time here and, and hopefully this is the first full season of many. And yeah, I'd really like to come back here and, and to play many more seasons and you know, in the next probably 12 months, I want to try and apply for a citizenship and become a bit of a native so I can be a local. And uh, we're in the process of trying to find the, the ways to do that. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a long-term thing rather than a short-term thing. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so far it's progressing well.